turning now to Ohio. The retrial for Erica Stefanko continued today. Stefanko was found guilty back in 2020 of aggravated murder for placing a bogus pizza order that lured her husband's ex-wife Ashley Biggs to her death in 2012. Now that conviction was ultimately overturned and today jurors continued hearing testimony from Stefanko's co-defendant Chad Cobb. Well, Cobb is Ashley Biggs' ex-boyfriend and father to their child. She was also at one point the husband to Erica Stefanko. He pled guilty to her murder in 2013, but later implicated Stefanko in her first trial in 2020. He also said today that he only pled guilty to the charges for the sake of their child. Well, now in Ohio, witnesses have an option of whether or not they testify on camera. Well, Cobb chose not to, saying he had been on camera enough, but you're, you're still able to hear his voice. Take a listen. Well, you pled guilty to it. I pled guilty to the charges. Yes, sir. And the charges were that you committed an aggravated murder against Ashley Biggs. So we do agree. No, you're saying that I pled guilty to killing Ashley. I'm saying that I did not kill Ashley. I did not plead guilty to killing Ashley. I pled guilty to the incredibly long kitchen sink full of charges that they had against me. And the reason I had to do that was because... Of your children. We'll get there. Yeah. So if you didn't plead guilty to aggravated murder involving Ashley Biggs, then who did you kill? Because you had to have killed somebody, aggravated murder and murder. Who did you kill? Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Go ahead and answer. I pled guilty to the charges. Okay. And it's it's complicated. I know in one part it don't make sense, and I'm not trying to be, be insulting by any means, but when a situation like that is presented to me, it's like you're going to plead guilty to these charges or you're going to lose your kids and they're going to get adopted out. I mean, it broke me. I... I pled guilty to every single one. And that's why I told the judge in my sentencing, it's like, there's a lot that I need to say about this, but there's very little that I can. Now, also on the stand today, Matthew Travis, he was a friend of the victim that also hired her to work with him at Domino's Pizza. He testified about the night Biggs delivered a pizza to Stefanko and failed to quickly return to the store. That's when he went looking for her and made a gruesome discovery. She don't return in a timely manner. I lock up the shop, but I go try to find her. When you say a timely manner, how much time do you think passed before you started getting worried? 15, 20 minutes. And according to you, that would have been ample time for her to go, drop the pizza off, and come back? Absolutely. She was my best driver. She was quick. Okay. You say you lock up the... Thank you. Okay. At any time before you lock up and, and just going out there, did you try to call her? Several times. Did she answer? No. And you had her number? On speed dial. All right, so you lock up and try to go find her. Tell the jury what happens. I went to that, I went to where she was supposed to be delivering the pizza. I pulled into the parking lot. I seen a bottle of blood. I turned around and I called the police. Still emotional to this day. All right, let's bring in our guest. Joining us to discuss, our president of the West Coast Trial Lawyers Association, Nima Romani, and Deputy Public Defender Philip Dubé, a veritable all-star cast with me here tonight. Thank you both for joining me. Truly appreciate it. And Nima, let's start right there with Stefanko. Number one, um, the second witness in the state's case, they started this thing with a bang. Many times we see prosecutors start a case and they go through the procedural aspects before they get to the meat of the case. Here they went right into the meat, calling Chad Cobb, and again, He's the reason we're here. Initially, he testified in the first trial via Zoom, and the appeals court said that wasn't good enough for this case. He was too important a witness and that he had to be in the courtroom. How do you think he did today? Oh, I thought he did great. And look, when you're the prosecution, you don't want to rely on a co-defendant cooperator testimony alone. But we know that he's the star witness here. And look, let's be honest, Stefanko is getting a new trial, not for any substantive reasons, but for procedural ones. And listen, I agree that she has a Sixth Amendment confrontation right to cross-examine the witnesses against her. And that's what's going to happen. But this isn't someone who's actually innocent. She was an active participant in the crime. And I really like when the state comes out strong, comes out swinging, because Oftentimes, you can really convince the jury before the defense even puts on their case. Now, Philip, you know, the cross-examination, what they really wanted to focus on was the motivation 
of Chad Cobb. Now, on the stand, he did this in the first trial. He did it again here. His claim is that there was a fight between he and Ashley Biggs, but he didn't kill her. It was actually the defendant, and he wants, in his um, appeal, to be convicted of a lesser crime because he didn't premeditate this. It was something that happened and didn't actually commit the crime. Was that effective enough as a cross-examination here? Uh, I think it was, and it was also effective enough for him to hopefully get out someday, because if he is successful on appeal and he gets resentenced to a, a determinate sentence, he could eventually get out and have a, a future relationship with his kids. What I find particularly troubling about this fact pattern, I don't know if Nima would agree, is when you call a pizza parlor or a chicken delight or any of these places, you have no way of knowing who's going to be your delivery person. Just because I call an employee place of pizza for delivery, unless you specially request a specific driver, how on earth would anybody know that a particular person will be delivering your order? There's no way to know. And I think that is a stronger argument as to why she had nothing to do with it. If anything, it sounds like the argument would be that he set her up to do the dirty work because of that bitter custody battle. And he wants some type of future relationship with the kids. But otherwise, you know, it's an uphill battle for her. No mistake about it. Yeah, on his direct, the state tried to bring out the fact that Erica was just as upset about the custody battle going on because she grew very close to Grace, who was Ashley and Chad's child.